what up, Mark Pod. Big slate of action. Last night, seven games. Uh, plenty to be pulled from each of them. Um, we'll go game by game. Quick hit, instant reaction from each because this is a a monumental night for multiple teams. Um, I think the big ones, and like I said, we'll get to each game, but the big the big pieces across the board, Indy gets a win that they most certainly needed. Run DMV, we've got some questions. Uh, Philadelphia finally grabs a win, and Africa, I mean, this is about as, as sad of a title defense as you get if you're not named the Golden State Warriors. So, uh, big night. Quick standings update. I mean, it's early to do it, but just to kind of put some put some pieces in in uh, in context as far as it goes with some of these teams like Indy, um, Run DMV, Philadelphia, and then of course Africa. So with the win by Philadelphia over Run DMV, they're now tied for at one and three at the bottom of the Atlantic. Indy gets that win. They they draw even with Heartland. Africa's 0-4. Latin America lost two. They're 1-3. And, um, and then the wins, you know, originators, top of the Arctic. Um, but overall, a big night with a lot of moving pieces. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's start with Indy because I think that's the biggest one. This is what happens when you give Johan Nojovic minutes. He gets major minutes, scores 28 points, and... It gets the Indy Stripes a win that they absolutely needed. It took far too long for Indy to find a rotation for him. And look, this is not a complete solving of the problem for Indy because Reza Red still had zero points in 13 minutes. But Johan, and but to that point, I know they're bringing him off the bench. That doesn't mean he should only play 13 minutes. If he's coming off the bench, he should be the sixth man of the year. But... Johan Nojovic helped save what was a tumbling season and provides some offensive support that Bernard James needed, who, by the way, proved he can score in bunches 20-plus again, and he does it without bogging down the offense. He does it without taking 28 shots to get there. Great night for the offensive Indy Stripes. They did it against a good Lakeshore drive team who was 2-1 entering the game. This is big. This is a big win for Indy. Uh, and well-deserved, especially coming off what happened on Tuesday. Beast of the East beat Atlantis. Uh, Atlantis falls to 2-2. Two and two. Beast of the East now on top of the Atlantic at 4-1. and one. This is, you know, the, the main story is going to be Beast getting that fourth win. And Free Redmond was awesome. A uh, huge stat line to get them a win that gets them some separation towards the top. It could end up being them and Gotham 5 kind of running things out for the for the Atlantic Division crown. But the story for this one, Blaine Kidd has come back to earth and he's proven exactly who he was. There's a reason he was unranked. This is another disappointing game from him. And talked. I, I think it was James Canton mentioned it last week. They're leaving a lot left to, to really be seen. And this is one of those instances where you just kind of wonder, what, it's, what do we have here? And it's not anything good. Philadelphia beating Run DMV. Now we said that earlier. They're each now one and three. Um, this is major questions about Run DMV. There was a lot of kind of coming into the season. Let's give them a chance. We have plenty of uh, trust in Coach Myra Murray to turn things around. But there's a lot of things that just aren't getting turned around. And now you lose to an Philadelphia elite team that just had been one of the more uninspiring groups and outside of that window over Gotham 5 where certainly Coach Murray got up for it and the guys got up for it I feel bad asking this question but do we care about anybody except Gotham 5 because at this point it doesn't look like it Uh, from a Philadelphia side great night from Nas Hall Um, gives them exactly what they were missing talked about it before they need to take over guy on offense um, it doesn't solve it all. One win doesn't prove that Nas Hall is going to be the guy moving forward. Uh, Quan Singleton can be that guy too. He had a nice night. But finding a guy that can be dominant really matters. We talked about it on the Tuesday pod with how many guys, how many those good teams that have X number of guys averaging 10 or more points. You need to get Philadelphia. If, you're, if you want to get up to that, that's kind of the threshold that you need to hit. And finding other ways to score does that. 
All right, Southeast Select versus Queen City Kings. Southeast Select goes to three and one. Queen City now one and three. Um, but a tape to tape win. Southeast had not done that yet. Their their two wins coming into the night had been of the comeback variety. They didn't look like they're a team that could play for four quarters. They played for four quarters. And how about a, a huge, huge night uh, from Gabe Pope, who not only did he stuff the box score, which he did, but the biggest thing is that they found alternative scoring options outside of Trey Turner. I think that was the biggest question mark that I had beyond, hey, were they going to be able to play tape to tape? Are they going to be able to win a game like that, which they did? The big question was, how are you going to win games if Trey Turner isn't absolutely elite or if Trey Turner is getting bogged down, if he's getting attacked, what have you. Gabe Pope did it. 14 points, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, four, uh, 3 steals, 7 to 15 shooting, then a huge night from Terrell Pearson off the bench, 16 points in 10 minutes. Keandre Baldridge, 13 points in 24. Again, having multiple guys that can score the ball in a night where Trey Turner looked pedestrian, 19 minutes, 6 of 13 shooting. So huge win for Southeast to go from top to end, or from start to finish with this game. Um, it's a very big statement. I wouldn't start claiming that Queen City Kings is the type of team you win statements against, but it's still a win that, that proves you can go end-to-end, end, and they did that. All right, reigning trades, originators, big Arctic division crash clash. This is a disappointing loss for the reigning trades. We'll start with them. Uh, but Kevon Jackson continues to look really good for that team. Um, big 27-point night. Um, they've they've really found a lot of success with him. I'm not going to start raising the panic flag for Raining Trades. I think that this is about who you'd expect them to be. But a, a disappointing loss to come from to the, the hand of the originators, especially considering you had the chance at the top of the division early season uh, crown going. But, again, big story. We're going to the other side. Originators, DJ Wagner. DJ Wagner, the German. Massive statement. 34-5-5, and five, one night after watching Bronny go off uh, in a, South, or a Showtime win. He answers. Um, Bronny may end up being, and he may have a case for the top guy in the country, but <laughs> it's not right now, man. It is not right now. 34-5-5 five five is dynamic. Um, circle, let's, let's just do correct research here. Let's circle the first time we get showtime, and let's hope this isn't a casualty of the schedule. Um, the showtime originators matchup, May 29th, showtime and originators in Boston. Um, look, if if they can flex a schedule, I think we got to flex that schedule. Uh, it's a Monday night ESPN game. Um, we got to get that baby on SimWorld TV. That'll that'll be fun. But again, they didn't they didn't play, so that's not the point. DJ Wagner is the real deal, and I think we're gonna have a lot of these instances where one guy goes off in in Brawny, and he he answers on the other end. All right, Africa Yacht Club close the door on Africa. The season's over. Uh, another loss. They are zero and four on the season. None of them have looked inspiring. Yacht Club big win. Very crowded Tropic Division. Getting to 2-2 two and two, uh, is exactly what they needed. They had a lot of offensive rhythm for kind of the first time. They got Hart going. They got Laster going. They combined for 8-12 from deep. They need to find a way, Yacht Club does, to, to make that a little bit more of a consistent and, and routine thing. And then we'll wrap it up in uh, the final tilt of Tropic. Middle East and Latin America. Latin America... Um, another wasted opportunity. They look just like Africa. They look lost. Uh, they couldn't get a stop. Um, sure, Edgar Fernandez can score. He, he had a nice night, but they, outside of him, look really weak on offense, and then they just got blasted on the defensive end. They had a good first quarter and then just couldn't do anything. They could not slow down Middle East, too. Has been good, but I wouldn't classify them as some dangerous team. I mean, they're two and two, but you look around the the league at other two and two teams: uh, Lakeshore Drive, um, Best Coast Ballers, Asia Pacific. I don't really get the same type of fear in Middle East that I can I can get and I can understand in those other ones. So um, it's a crowded division, but it was a win that 
you really needed to see from Latin America to try to inspire some type of confidence in them. And I think it was just a loss between two teams that just don't really inspire confidence. All right, big slates of action uh, continue on Thursday. Uh, we are back to a Thursday game uh, this week after taking last Thursday off. Um, Run DMV right back at it against Beyond the Arch. Two teams that need wins. Showtime against AT Aliens. Um, Yacht Club in Latin America uh, talked about the opportunities there. Yacht Club can really bury them in that one. And then Cascadia Raining Trays. Uh, tune in for that one. 9 p.m. Inner City Rivalry. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. And then, of course, we get a nice Saturday hookup. So uh, Lone Star Basketball takes the floor. Jason McGez, who's been dynamic uh, on Saturday. So we'll uh, we'll touch base with y'all on uh, on Tuesday.